Um, when you start out, all the work you do results in something new and exciting. I should ask, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, but the more you build, the more any change you make is incremental as a percentage of what you've already got. So there's not, not a lot new. The only thing I will, although we do have some things to talk about, the only thing I will mention is um, tags. So tags are essentially just, as I understand it, categories. They're not any different from categories as we usually understand them. They just don't participate Bob in your category tree. So they're freestanding in that sense, uh, at least for now. They may start building up their own little, sub, little mini trees, uh, but for now they're flat. And they're represented here. Uh, initially, we had, um, I think there were about 300 of them. And they were simply a flat list uh, where I'm mousing now. And that was just too long. That didn't make any, that just didn't work as an experience to my mind. So uh, what happens now is I simply take every 15th category, add an ellipsis to it, and um, and then show the 15 categories underneath that sort of synthetic synthetic category uh, on the right. So it's, they're just now part of the table of contents like any other part of the table of contents. They don't behave any differently. Um, the other thing is, Bob, you and I are still going back and forth <laughs> on how, <laughs> how to handle um, the forums. And I'm, it's one of these things where a picture is worth a lot of words. So you had some thoughts. I, I managed to wrap my arms around a couple of them. So, for example, the years are now in descending order rather than ascending order. Um, one of the things, I'm, I'm not sure whether to be happy about this or not. One of the things about a hover based interface is that. Um, it's a lot more sensitive to any mouse movements you might make. We're typically, uh, when we are operating a user interface, um, it's pretty safe to move the mouse around without clicking or dragging. And as long as you don't click or drag, nothing much usually changes. With a hover-based interface, obviously, there can be huge changes based on small mouse movements because you, if you touch a sensitive area, a lot can, a lot can change. Um, so I stacked the years on top of the months here, and that initially was, for me at least, quite annoying because if you pick the year and then you mouse down to interact with posts, you were uh, you would go over the months and you would you would uh, mouse on a month, and there was an eleven and twelve chance that you clobber the posts that you wanted to look at. Uh, and that was bad. So I came up with this desperation mechanism where the months get out of the way uh, and leave a gap where you can come down as you move from year to year. Um, but Bob, you, from the exchanges we've had, you've got something much more than this in mind. And you seem to have a notion of sort of uh, traversing the tree from left to right as you move the mouse. And I'd like to understand that. I'll first ask if there are any questions on anything that I've shown so far. And then I would like to talk about that because I'd, like, I'd like us to get to the point where we're both happy with, with it. Um, I, have, I have no further questions and I'm willing to, I'm looking forward to, to the discussion on the, on the uh, forums. Let's, let's do that then. If you could go ahead. Start okay, so um, I probably haven't communicated it very well, but if you took the line that the 23 is on for the years and lowered that line right so it's it's level vertically with J programming. So when you come out of J programming, you're right on the years. Uh, and then underneath that is the months and then underneath that is the just as it is now. So the years and the months would shift altitude based right. on which, um, oh, how interesting. Because as you come out right now, you're going to go over one of those those items. You're not interested in them, but you're going to go over them, right? 
might be interested in them. Well, you might, but it's, it's unlikely, right? You're more likely to want to select off of year and month, I think. And, and there's nothing keeping you from going year, month, well, and dropping unless down. At, unless you're going after the current thing, which is where you, you usually you start out at. If you're looking for a recent post, it's it's where you're at. If, if, it's, if you're looking for a historical post, you want to dive back into history. Right. But you see, that's that would be the advantage of, of lowering the, that year level so it's right across from, in this case, J programming. So you could go back and forth across the years. Uh, you're not going to hop onto a, a more current uh, posting um, because because you're right in the year. So you can go back to whatever year you want, drop down to the month, and then then you can drop down further into this particular um, uh, into, into the particular uh, you know threads that you're interested in, and then from there you can go to the right and and select the particular post in that thread and what I had originally thought of, like, and, and I don't, I, I, I think the solution you came up with, which is the horizontal one, that actually works pretty well. Um, the original idea I had was you do that instead vertically so that you're, oh. you'd have a line vertical of the years there. Uh, and then next to that would be vertical. Well, actually you would have a line of the years followed by the months that were available, followed by the next year. And you do that the same way as your other columns. So it would become an index into the year month. So it would be in one line. You'd see uh, 23, uh, April, March, February, January. And then you'd see 22, the 12 months. You'd see 21, the 12 months, all the way back to 05. And then when you got to whatever level you wanted, you would move across to the threads, go through the threads, go across to whatever post on the threads, you'd go across and, and, and the trick with this is you're, you're absolutely right. You have to get a line out of the way to be able to really do it efficiently. I have another idea that might or might not be horrible for how to approach this issue. Okay. Which is currently, we, it's, a Hoover, it's a Hoover system. And we have the idea that you click on something to freeze that one in place. How about if instead of clicking on something to freeze something in place, clicking anywhere in the left-hand pane freezes everything as long as you're in the left hand plane and as long as you have the mouse down. I think I need you to peel back one layer of detail on that. If it's frozen, as long as I stay in the left margin. Right, but I'm saying, left. what if we change that? Okay. So that if, as long as you're on, anywhere on the left hand, the, 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 the ISI graph or ISI draw, whatever you, you're kind of using for that, as long as you're there, Having the mouse down means that you're not the, the Hoover is dis disabled. Whatever you've currently got selected there stays selected until you let it up, and you're using Hoover again, or until you leave the um, window. In which case, it doesn't matter. Hmm. So you you click down to select, and then you can drag across all these other windows. It won't do anything until you release, and then you'll be into the next window. Is that right? Right. Right. The only downside I see to that currently is we is is there's that quirk where we don't know if they release outside the window. So you gotta, you, you'll have to click inside the window again to unfreeze it, I guess, if you if you let it up. But other than that, it's, it's which is a document, you know, you can solve that by documentation maybe, but um, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's a huge change in the interaction and I'm not quite clear what it would be buying us, I guess. Well, what it buys us is the ability to, to go over arbitrary pieces of that interface without changing what you're looking at. Oh, we can do that by just moving to a click-based interface. And I'm, I, I hate to be difficult, but I'm going to be. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I want to do is see how far we can push this non-click philosophy. Yeah. And, and it's possible it will break before we're finished. And I, I, I've accepted that. I'm okay. Um, but I, I want to see how far you can push just hovering. Um, and it's, it has its frustrations, I, and, I, and Bob has mentioned this, and I recognize it. Um, but it, it is a style of interaction that we are accustomed to. It's how drop-down hierarchical menus work. 
and we managed to navigate them okay. We're not, it's not ever the primary user interface mechanism, I grant you that. Um, but I would like to see how far we can push it. And the, the reason for that is that I think we've all been, because the web is so slow and disorienting, we've all been habituated to hesitate to click. And for that reason, I think the web actively discourages information exploration at some level. And I would like to sidestep that if at all possible. We're all very comfortable hovering on things. Hovering is a safe thing to do. Um, and what I'd like to see is whether we can build a whole interface that's based exclusively on this very safe thing that we're all comfortable doing. And perhaps in that way, in Encourage information exploration. I apologize for not having mentioned this before. It's something that's uh, I've always had it in the back of my mind. I've only gradually you articulated it myself, and now I am articulating. Actually, I, I think you've uh, if you haven't articulated it before, I've certainly got that impression. <laughs> so okay. it's it's been systematically there. <laughs> um, I do have to say. Um, I am still unclear on what you're looking for. It really sounds as if what will be happening is that the years and the months that are used to navigate the forums would actually change altitude yes. as you move from forum to forum. Yep. Well, interesting. So what, what, what? suppose I were down here at uh, J Beta, let's say. Yep. The years would be right here where users yep. find T and J are. Yep. Uh, and then what would be above it? You could, I, I, I'm not sure. At this point, I'm thinking I, I don't have anything to put in above it. I'm, it's, it's, it's dead space right now, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be used for something if we thought something might be useful to put above it. Um, what would be below it would be what you're selecting, you know, year by year, right. and then below that would be months. I want to return to something Rolla said because I think there are two use cases for hovering on the forums. The first use case is what's the latest, and we should support that. And I and I, I try to. So you always select the most recent year and the most recent month when you pick a forum. So it's always to, uh, right now it's April of twenty twenty three. Um. And that's, that's one case that I think should be supported and is right now. And then the second case is historical browsing. This is not really how you would search. This is how you would leaf through a magazine while you're sitting on the couch, which is another image I like to have of Humber based interfaces. It's not casual. Um, and that also, I think, is supported by this approach because you can, in fact, go directly from selecting a forum in the margin to picking a year, picking a month. Um, so I feel like, is there another use case that I'm missing here that isn't covered by the interface? Well, if you're in the forums, the issue is that, there, that the information structure doesn't really support other use cases, you know, we it, we have search, and we have dates, but we don't have um, a designed hierarchy other than that. Um, except unless maybe we go take, maybe we could do something with titles. I don't know, you know, titles across all time, and and look for common words and build a cloud out of that or something. We don't really have. It's not really organized for browsing. It's it's a time it's a time series thing. Um, when, when my when my son looked at this interface and over the Easter weekend he came and visited and he's got a background in UX and, and some design stuff, um, he was really impressed with it. He was super impressed with how fast it was, and when when he I showed him the search, he said, "Well, that's what people are going to use." <laughs> Just done. Like I mean, that's what you would use. You, you, the other stuff he said, and he kind of pushed it back on me. He says, the other information you've got there is all the categories. You're going to have to be really 
uh, clear about what categories you're choosing and choose categories that allow people to naturally navigate. He says, that's a tricky process. But he says, the search is exactly what everybody would use. It's just, it's so quick and it, and it zeroes in. So when we get back to talking about the forums, the fact that the forums show up in the search means that you're going to do a text search and those forums, that's what you're going to be looking for most of the time. I don't think you're going to browse the forums because I don't think as Rob puts out, there's so much information and it's, it's organized by year and month and maybe a title of a thread. But past that, it's really not organized because it comes in as it comes in. Um, the threads, the threads are, are useful though when you're, you, you, often when you're reading a, a, a message, it, you, need it, you need to see earlier and later messages in the thread to understand what they're talking about. And you, and you have access to that this way. And you would have access well, to that right. as well on a search. But you, you don't, in fact, and that's actually a really interesting point. Um, when, you, when you do a search and you find a forum post in J programming, I mean, if the rest of the thread, if, if posts from the rest of the thread also match the search, then you get them, and that's nice. But if there are posts in the thread that don't match, they're not going to show up. Ah, uh, gotcha. Right. So yeah. maybe there's something that could be done here somewhere. I'm not sure where. Well, actually, uh, I would say... I would say that's a feature, not a bug, because if I do a search, I don't want to go to a part of a thread that doesn't mention what I'm looking for. Sure, but there may be some context early on in the thread that's of interest. Like what problem was this? What problem were they trying to solve? In fact, a, a lot of that actually shows up in the thread. So it, it just so happens that the way people reply, it includes the earlier posts. So maybe this isn't really a problem. But if you do get a post where somebody doesn't set that up so the previous post isn't there, when you go down to the bottom of the thread, you can then actually, by clicking on the, on the web view itself, go back or forward through the thread, because that's always there, right? That's true. But that, that, that's the clicking thing that I'm so... Yeah, but by, I, I think by the time you move over to the web view, you're, you're in the zone where you are clicking, right? Well, I think you, you kind of have to give that. What, what I wonder is, could we come up with an experience? Uh, could we come up with an experience where we made the entire thread available within the search results in such a way that it wasn't intrusive or annoying? In other words, these, these are not, in fact, search results, but you do have access to them if you want it, easy access to them if you want it, in the context of the left side of the interface. So if I understand what you're saying is what would happen is if you had a text search that matched something in that thread, what you would do is put the thread in instead of the specific post that mentioned that text. Well, you put the specific post in because you do want to be able to zero in on the hit. Um, but somehow, I know not how, uh, there would be uh, immediate easy access to the entire thread as if you were um yeah, yeah as if you were using well, the standard even, even even here on the standard one you don't have the entire thread you just had the thread within that month no uh it's buggy but i do try to grab the ball row okay um yeah so i i'll, I'll occasionally you know, this one looks like it's working but uh i, I do get all of the authors uh, I'm having a little trouble occasionally. The URL that I build is inaccurate in the month that it selects, so you'll get a you'll get no hit loaded in the in the browser. Uh, but the the framework is there to sh to show the entire thread, and that works, and to load any element of the thread, and that's fun. But I will fix it. Um, I would actually also dispute. Um, the notion that people won't browse old forum posts. I find myself doing it uh, when I should be programming. Um, <laughs> it is sufficiently easy now that you just you know, you go from month to month or year to year and run your eye down the posts and maybe there's something interesting. How often there is in my experience. And actually, I think your format now works quite well for that. 
you know, I it, you can see the the titles of the thread, and other than, um, other than you know expanding what that text is, which actually I don't see a vantage view because if you hover over it, it's going to show up in the in the web view. Mm -hmm. So I mean I I don't. Uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. I saw. Yeah, no, no, I know. I got distracted by that too because I, I was wondering what was going on with that too. Um, but um, yeah, so what I'm saying is, I think your format right now works well for browsing, because you're seeing the the information as much information as you're going to see on a thread without going into the individual postings is down your left side, and the individual postings are on your right side. And when you hover over that thread, it's going to grab, I think, usually the, the top of the thread, doesn't it? Most recent? Oh, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. So this should be the should, Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's what you're going to want to do if you're browsing. And then you can move over to the individual posts. But you see what the advantage is there? You can just hover over the thread title, and you're going to see the post in your web view. So Yeah, you'll see that's true. Yeah. yeah. You're going, it's going to be there, so you don't need to put it anyplace else. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, in in your columns for your 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 hover area, you don't have to have any more information because your column for your thread is going to take the top of that thread and show it to you in your web view. So there's That's no need true. to put more information in the column. Uh, that is probably true. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Yeah. So in that way, your your um, view here is fairly uncluttered. I would I I appreciate that, and I think I, I think I would agree. I'm still struggling a little bit with the idea of moving. I. I I, I do like this notion of malleable user interfaces. I think I wrote to you about that at some point in passing, Bob. And I, I, I would like to experiment or at least think about the notion of moving the years uh, in response to where you're hovering, which, which forum you're hovering on. I think that's an intriguing idea. I'm going to need to think about it some more. I am a little concerned about losing the real estate above. Um, I have a pretty spacious screen, but not everybody has a screen that's spacious. Well, I have, I, I've been thinking about, I have a comment on RAL solution, which is to click and hold down, and then the the changes aren't responsive while the mouse is held down until you release on another point, and then it's responsive again. I think the challenge with that is quite often that's used as in the language as dragging something and we're not that's going to be true. dragging anything. So that's one thing that would be different in this interface to somebody who's used to clicking on something and dragging it across. Clicking would basically cause your mouse not to trick on the hover until you go up and release it and then it would be hovering again. But the other thing I'm thinking is the the other way around it is still our um, one second delay so that if we're in, over a part less than a second, it doesn't register. Or probably less than that, say less yeah. than a half a second. Yeah, I've got it down to, I think, a quarter second now, which may be too yeah. short. Well, and also, we can... I believe it's fun. <laughs> that's What's the that? idea. That's the yeah, yeah. Also, I believe it's part of the theory. It's like if you're on essays permutations, and Bob, I did use that air gap mechanism that you mentioned, where I added an extra view yeah. uh, in between, and it works most of the time. It picks up the mouse event. Um, so you'll notice I went actually selected scripts card ge cards generator. But we're still looking at essays permutation. So I was on scripts cards generator for less than a quarter second. It got selected, but I wasn't on it long enough to uh, load up a page. So we're still on the right. page that I picked from uh, over here, I think. And yeah. and so what I guess I'm wondering is, is on each of your buttons, if you could, if you could, uh, 
stop your timer when an enter the area of for the mouse happens. So you're not concerned about leaving the area. You're concerned about entering the area and then you would start the timer again. What would the effect of that be? It means that you don't have to wait for a second or a quarter of a second do you don't have to be over the site for a quarter of a second to tell it i don't want this one if by the time you hit the next site you enter the next site restarts the timer it's just it's oh you didn't want that one and now it restarts the timer if you stay over that one it's going to change to that site if you're moving through it's going to it's going to i guess in terms of what the computer's seeing is it's going to see Enter, not interested. And as, as you enter the next column, it's going to go, oh, you weren't interested in the previous one. Oh, you weren't interested in the previous one. And then if you stop and hover for more than a quarter of a second or whatever, it's going to say, okay, I'll switch to that one. But your delay is a quarter of a second. And it's what's happening now. That seems like what he's got currently, doesn't it? Well, I yeah. think he's triggering it on the timer being over the the button for his okay. length of time. And if it's less than that, it doesn't pick it up. But if you go through it, it, it has to realize that it's gone through. It seems to be very quick on picking up entering. And my guess is because we're not doing any timers with entering. And so what I'm thinking is if we reset a timer on entering, it'll just be just as quick and we'll, we'll know that's what's happening. That's what's happening? When, when, when you enter, when you touch a label, yeah. we start a quarter second time. Yeah. Every time you move to another label, we restart that timer. Right. Okay. So you said. And it's only when you pause for at least a quarter second yeah. that we load up the corresponding page. So, so if we yeah, get so that, ahead. if we tune that time maybe a bit, because if, if you think about it, because it's it's not it's not dead in the time that you're moving between because each time you do an enter it restarts the timer if you go say from j programming when you're in your forums and you go across to do your um your year say you go up and through it shouldn't change anything right it, it's as you enter the new year it's it's going to go okay you didn't want the last one you didn't want the last one the same way if you came down, it should do the same thing with the months. You may not have to move the months out of the way. Oh. Because um, you're not on them so for that long. There are two different things happening. And maybe that's a source of confusion now that I think about it. Um, there's selecting structure, which is instant. Uh, and there's selecting content, which takes a quarter second. So the left side of the screen is instantly responsive. That's your structure selection. Yeah. The right side of the screen, because we're dealing with the web and it's slow, is has got that quarter second timer on it. Um, I'm a little reluctant to have the left side of the screen become unresponsive. I want it to be like a video game. Yeah. I live with the fact that the right side <laughs> Is unresponsive because that's just life in the big city. There's nothing we can do about that. Yeah. Yeah. How about this? How about this? For the top nav, instead of it being a two layer thing, have it be a horizontal accordion which combines month and year. And, and, and it's, still, it's still a vertical thing for year over month, but it's, it accordions just like on the left side, except for it's a horizontal accordion instead of a vertical accordion. So it would be if I had if I hovered over twenty two, there would the be months uh, would be inserted would be, uh, between twenty two and twenty one. Right, there would be twelve twenty twos each with a with a um, with a month label underneath it. Got it. And then if I wanted to move rapidly from twenty three to fourteen, would I have to go through twelve yeah, but it's times? An, it's yeah, but it's an accordion, just like you have on on the left side. It's Except for it's a horizontal accordion, so the ones that aren't close, you, oh, just, it, you, you you just see a little little a little bar indicating that it's there, and it, and you have a magnifying glass showing the ones that are near where your mouse is. 
Isn't that interesting? Huh. So let's see. So that's 20 through 5. 18 times 12. So that's a couple of hundred. For J programming, that would probably be a couple of hundred elements to scroll through. And that, I think that might be too many. Um, the, the same thing that drove us to put um, subcategories in tags, which was that there were a couple of hundred some category or tag categories, a few hundred tag categories. Would it, would it help to have two I levels think, of magnification? Like um, you have well, that, a, in effect, is what we've got now. But I mean, instead of it, instead of it being um, here, here it's 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 two levels, but it's not magnification. It's it's one level that's a, a accordion, another level it's a different kind of hierarchy. Um, right. As as opposed to what I was thinking or trying to trying to think or trying to say is have two levels of accordion up at the top you have the the a near horizon and a far horizon and the far horizon is just yeah. the lumps right i guess the my response was trying to get to the idea that we have a far horizon in the top now in the form of years and a right. near horizon in the bottom in the form of months Maybe I'm not fully seeing what it is that you're describing, for which I apologize. Um, maybe it's a bad idea, but um, you said you're talking about on the order of a couple thousand um, elements in the accordion, you know, at exposed elements. A couple hundred. A couple hundred? It's 12 times. Yeah, okay. Um, and I was thinking, have you maybe six that are are current and then a um a pictograph representation of the nearest um 20 30 60 whatever something that are nearby and then just a blank space outside of that for ones that are not that are not close i i like the idea i mean the nice thing about some sort of magnification accordion scrolling mechanism is that we could get it down to one dimension. Um, and that would mean that you could more easily move through time. You could move through time across a single line rather than having to go from top to bottom to navigate. And that's, as you point out, Raul, exactly what we're doing here. And that based on a user group of exactly two people seems to work okay. Um, what, about if, about what about if what we did, instead of showing every year over its month, you would see 23 and then centered under 23 would be, you know, well, 22 would have 12 months under it. But you would... I'm just trying to think of how you would do this. You'd have to have them spaced out more. So you would still do an accordion effect, but you're only going between 23 and 22, but there would be a gap between 23 and 22. So you could actually have the months expand underneath you. And you might not see all the months, but within the range of between the space between 23 and 22, you could have enough space that going one direction would pull you all the way back, say from January to April. And going the other way towards 21 might give you all the ones between um, August, you know, August to September, August, August yeah. to December. I think I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the problem that we're solving at this point. Well, I think it, what I think it gets around is that mm -hmm. you might be able to leave your months and your years at the top. Because as you go over, as you go over your hover, you're not going to be switching things all over the place. And you may not need to move your months around um, if when you're on that section of the years, you've got the months that you want underneath you. And you can move to those months without, um, without moving off them, essentially. So... But I, do I have the proper problem still? 
where I see something that I was interested in because I was hovering on 21. Yeah. So I'm interested in the bug report, for example. Yeah. Is moving down going through a month? Yes, but my way of thinking, and we may not have the sensitivity and positioning to do this. My way of thinking is by moving the mouse from one side to the other while you're over a year will allow you to put the month that you want under that uh, under that so number. Yeah. And then you would yeah. just drop straight through that, that month to the bug report. That, that, in effect, is Raul's solution, where the entire the months and the years are effectively on a single line. Right. It just the so difference... happens that you're showing the months in, the, in a second line, but it, it, you wouldn't actually need to. Uh, merely by being at the right distance between 22 and 21, you would have picked August. Exactly. You wouldn't need to touch August down below. That's right. So I think, okay, so it's from two directions, we've come to a similar similar solution the difference from Raoul's yeah. solution is mine would only have 18 entries at the top line no no um it would have 18 visible entries on the top line right and so that's where i'm saying we may not have the gradation we may not have the sensitivity to be able to control that easily you just need them to space that's them enough cool. apart that you could move back and forth between while you were hovered on something and have the months float back and forth for you. And they would be on an accordion underneath you. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know if we've got enough pixels to make that work for the date ranges we have to support. Yeah, no, no, I agree. That, that, that would be the question. Hmm. It's sort of a parallel to what I've... Go ahead, please. Oh, I was going to say, to me, it's sort of a parallel of what we've got on the furthest left table of contents, where now when we go up and slide up and down, um, our, when our mouse is over something, that's what it's, that's what's going to be highlighted. That's what it's focusing on. We don't need to go out to the white yeah. section, right? No, that's, that's, that's true. The, the only... The only reason you and I have talked about going back and forth on this, yeah. the only reason for the white section is that I, I think of the scroll stripe as being your course navigation and the white section as being your fine navigation. Um, and I think the longer the list gets, the more appreciative you'll be that there are two different navigation mechanisms in the same list. So you can get into the neighborhood you're interested in. Um, but, you know, it is very sensitive. It's very easy to pick the wrong thing as you're moving to the right. It's kind of nice that scrolling stops in the white section and then you can pick a particular item. Um, I think that, that depends on how magnified you are. When you it mag absolutely when you does. Yeah, yeah. And, and you don't need to see, like... What you're seeing now, I think, is great. That number, I think that gives you some variety. But if it doesn't give you the scrolling you need, I think you could magnify in a bit more. Because what happens when you get to the top is you reach your level, but then you can still go up and get Nuvok, right? I, I really like that interface. Yeah. Um, good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm not... <laughs> and so I guess what I'm, I'm saying is when I'm... Going... Go ahead. No, I, I was telling, I was asking that you go ahead because I'm still a little oh. bit confused. Well, the same thing that I'm seeing on the leftmost table of contents, if you think about that same thing happening across the years, except that, yeah. in, you know, th that same sort of thing would happen. So your, your year would expand, but what would expand below would be the months of that year. Right. No, I, I, yeah, um, I think it could be done. The only open question is, on a typical screen, can we support 12 months out of the year for, you know, 05 to 23? And I don't know. I My, my intuition is that we can't easily, that it would be too frustrating, too finicky. Um, but I could be wrong about that. 
we gonna, would I, I am going to think about to that for sure. I think from what I've got in my mind's eye, I think we'd only need to expand to four months out of any group. And as you moved to side to side, that four mm -hmm. months would shift through the year. And the rest would be well, don't, just don't, don't. lines. No, no, because the presumption then is the problem then is that I will clobber when I move down from the year through that four month segment. I have a three in four chance of picking the wrong month when I do that. But you should, depending on, again, I, I think the challenge is how, how finally we can, we don't want to get so fine with the mouth moves movement that nobody can do it. And, and I think yeah, that's exactly. what I, I'm bouncing up against. So that I could position it so the right month is under the right ear and then I just drop straight down. But I don't know that it's easy enough to differ differentiate between the months when I'm on a year. Even if they're expanded, I'm not sure I can do that. Yeah. Well, one, here's another very, here's a completely different way of, of tackling this problem that doesn't an accordion at the top, which is whatever month is selected um, is the month that is directly underneath the year when you first select the year. Right. Uh, then when you, if you go down, uh, you're not changing anything. You're going down and moving horizontally if you want a different month. Right. I guess the, the reason to be a little nervous about that would be if I'm trying systematically to go through the posts uh, either picking a year and then going through by month, or picking a month and then going through by year. Right. If you, if you maybe you lose the ability to pick a month and then pick the year, and you lose that with the accordion also. Yeah. True. True. But the question is, how important is that that approach? Maybe not very. Yeah, that's true. Interesting. Yeah, pick the month that's directly beneath. You. Of course, right like now that. you're opening up a gap or attempting to open a gap so that you could go straight down, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the idea, um, was to, to make it safe, to, to avoid the clobber problem by changing the palette a little bit, the selection palette a little bit. Um, and I am, in fact, arbitrarily picking December for you every time you move to a new year, so I'm violating my own um, notion there. Probably shouldn't be doing that. If you pick August of 13 and then you go to 14, it should probably remain August. All right, I, I've got a lot to think about now, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. I'll, I'll let that simmer and see, see what I can come up with. Um, were there any other... Oh. Uh, Bob, I did ask you, and you, you responded positively, but I wasn't sure whether anything, whether there was any chance that anything might happen with it. Um, if it's not obvious to everybody concerned, I am not a visual person, and I wondered about the prospect of getting some sort of graphic design help. Um, I, I can talk to Stephen about it and, and have him run through and take a give do a survey of it and see what he thinks. He's he's got a good eye. He's uh, he does a lot of design for what he does. So I, I think he at least as a first pass. If we wanted to go further than that, we might have to try and pull somebody in who is a professional, willing to put you know a fair amount of time in on it. Um, having said that, I. I, I think... I was going to say, Go having said that, I helped pay for his his education, so I think he kind of you know owes me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I need maybe six colors, you know? I've got maybe six things happening on the screen. I've got fonts, I've got yeah. uh, the, you know, the selection rectangles, the, the scroll stripes, and, and it, the, the histogram, excuse me, the barcode. I, I just, I, I can't juggle that many colors, and maybe somebody with a better eye could. Yeah, no, I think that's so, yeah, something... First pass the, I guess the question I've got is, is that where you are right now? Do you think that that design is getting in the way of your functionality? Or do you think it's something you do when your functionality is more? It's strictly a matter of, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, at this point, feel like, and, and maybe I'm misguided, um, we're pretty close. 
I don't see the design making major changes. Um, it's entirely possible that we'll come up with a different approach to the time navigator performance, but I, I think we're pretty close on everything else. Um, if Stephen could just spend, um, I, I'm not looking for a redesign. What I'm looking for is colors for the elements that I'm pretty sure we're going to have and that I feel are pretty solid. And and probably a way to use the style and the color to draw you through the right uh, process, so that if there's a way I, to I, link things by color, that would make more sense and those kind of things. Yeah, although even that might be a little too ambitious. Um, I would be happy just with something that didn't assault the eye, which is where I think we are now. Um, just better colors. Mm -hmm. And if he feels more ambitious, if he like to if he's got suggestions on layout and interaction, I would love to hear them for sure. But I'm not looking to take up a lot of his time. Yeah. Um, just something so that so that when you see a screenshot of the thing, your first reaction isn't what the hell is that? What's going on there? Which is the reaction that I have to it at this point. One thing that I did draw from his initial look at it was currently the way it's set up, we're not focusing on search enough. Well, we do have a whole field dedicated to it. Although we, we, we do, but that's something where I think if, if we were to look at design, we, we might highlight that area. It might be a slightly bigger field. It might be a more prominent color that kind of stuff just sure. because yeah, i think yeah, that that's great. how most people use it all right um yeah as i say any suggestions whatsoever would be extremely welcome yeah but where yeah. i'm the, the point of departure for me is better colors yeah um, okay. but any additional thoughts that you might have i would be very grateful for and um, I'm guessing the frames per second is just a, a diagnostic really more than anything else, right? It's going to disappear. Uh, yeah, I would. I don't think we would need to keep it. I'm, I'm, I have it there to keep me honest. Um, yeah. So as things, if I see that number start to drop, yeah, uh, I become concerned. Uh, but yeah, the frames per second would probably go in the final version. The other thing I'm thinking about, um, so the, the way this works is there's a database because it happens to be SQLite uh, in the background, and it's got the table of contents and all of the um, all the rest of the structure. It's got all the forms in it uh, and so on. And then as you do searches, uh, it's augmented. So that database, which you downloaded from jsoftware.com at some point, presumably, and um, which I send you. Uh, uh, occasionally, Bob. Yep. Um, it's being augmented on disk, and when you when you visit uh, pages, your history is automatically being augmented. That's kept in the database too. Everything is kept in the database. And then the problem is, if you download a new version of the database, it's going to clobber your searches, your recently visited um, pages, and I'm also going to do bookmarks. I think at some point. Go and clobber those as well. So I'm trying to figure out how to migrate. And I uh, I had thought that I would start to use us somehow start to juggle an additional file or an additional database and mer uh, full of um, search results and recently visited pages and bookmarks and merge them on the fly. And so you'd have the in-memory, you'd have your in-memory database that was emerging the two. And I, I don't know, maybe that's the right answer. I'm not sure. What's the, what is the etiquette on um, juggling files in the temp directory? I'm assuming that this database that I've described would live on, on the person's temp directory. If you're gonna start, creating files on their file system on the fly, 
Do you ask for permission for that? Is that not something one does? Um, what, what are my options here? When, I did something similar to this in the very first iteration I did of my, my video labs. Is I thought it will be useful if people could make notes as they're watching these things. And those notes Good. would be permanent on their computer. Um, in, yeah. in it, as it worked out, I was, you know, overthinking the whole thing and I was doing too much work and nobody was going to use them. But, um, I did, I, I did, I figured if I asked permission at the initial making of notes that I was going to write to their file and it was going to be them writing their stuff to their file. That's the one difference to what you're going to be doing. Although if it's bookmarks, they're going to want to put those bookmarks in. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Co it, it, it's essentially you're giving the permission to create a cookie file, except that we're doing it in J, and that's the information you're going to use in the future, right? Let's see. Okay. All right. Let me think about that. I, this morning it occurred to me that I might be able to do it without a separate file. Um, when you, there will be a button somewhere to download the latest cache image, and I think. What you might do is, uh, within the application, grab all of the ancillary data out of the database, put it in memory, download the new cache, and then write all that data to the new cache database that was just downloaded. So it's, if you were swinging through vines, you're letting go of one vine before you've actually grasped the next one, because if the application crashes at a at an awkward moment, you're going to lose all that information. But what it would let me do is avoid creating separate files on their hard disk entirely. Well, there okay, so ever there would only ever be one database file. I, I see three. <coughs> Boy, my voice is messing up. I see three issues that to think about there. One is is disk full issues, um, which you, we generally don't have a lot of insight on because. Um, we don't have access to that part of the OS from Jay very well. One is namespace issues. You know, somebody wants to go and clean stuff up manually, knowing what's cleanable. And um, what was the third one? Um, I guess the, the recovery issue that you just mentioned. The the uh, if things go bad, being in a in a good in a quick quick to start state when when you come back. Um, and at some point, you know, you get the, because of our limited abilities to anticipate what the user intends and, and what their machine is like, we're going to mess up in some cases. Um, you want to minimize those. Um, Could you say you more have... about the names? What's that? I'm sorry, I thought you were. Oh, yeah. No, say I, a little I, more about... Oh, the namespace issue is. Um, if you have more than one file that you're working with, how do you show to the user that, that any other files are connected with it? Or how, how does the user decide that that file is going to stay or go? It's that kind of, kind of an right. issue. If, if, they, if they're coming at this from outside of the application, looking at it from the operating system, how, does, how, did, how do they make sense of what they're seeing? Right. Good point. And then you might use it. Keep it to one file. You can keep it in one file. You can also create a subdirectory and, and do all of your stuff in there. You can use a common prefix, um, which is kind of similar to a subdirectory. There's uh, a lot of it's just about having good names for things. Yeah. Okay. What about if if you know using the subdirectory, you create one folder, but in the folder there are two files. One's the DB file that everybody would get. That's from the J site, the other file is the personal stuff for that person. And when you go to update, you're only going to update the the, the the database from the J site. The other one wouldn't be touched. And it sits in one folder that might be labeled JWiki browser or whatever. So that they'll know that's where it is. It's not going to be moving all over the place. It's one folder, but it'll be two files. One's for personal stuff, and the other is for you know, the stuff that will be updated as the wiki changes. Right. Yeah, that's where I started or where I found myself at some point. Um, I really like the single file solution for debugging purposes. 
So if they do run into a problem, if the, if the application exhibits inappropriate behavior of some sort, I can just say, send me the database file. And it's got everything. Uh, in addition to, it's got the, the original data that they downloaded. It's got all their searches, all their recent stuff, all their bookmarks. And it's got a log that I write. Um, an activity log and a crash log table to which I write constantly as the application is running. Yes, Bob, your activity is being monitored. And <laughs> if, if you ran into something really peculiar, I, the first yeah. thing I would do is ask you to send me the data file, the database file. Um, and I really like that model. I like the simplicity and robustness of it and would prefer to stay away from directories and from juggling multiple files if I can avoid it. But wouldn't you prefer just to ask not for the database file because that's not changing. Ask for the file that's changing, which would be the personal file. That's where the the, uh, the log would well, be. No, two, two points on that. First, uh -huh. the database file could be any one of a large number of versions of that database file. I don't know which one they've got. And right. secondly, it's precisely the interaction between the personal and the uh, server cache database file that might be of interest. Mm -hmm. It would be really nice if they were all, you know, I, yeah. if I merge them in memory, uh, I, then I lose that if the application crashes. I don't know what was going on. But if it's all sitting on a single file on disk, I can get a copy of that. And you have yeah, to compromise really, a really good insight. If you're going to update it, with a complete replacement, you have to compromise on the old version versus the new version. You either have two of them there at the same time or you have neither of them there at the same time. Um, the Windows way of doing things favors the zero of them at the same time and the Unix way of doing things favors the two of them at the same time. Um, the other way yes. of doing it though is instead of replacing the whole file, if you want to maintain a, 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 a database, represent the file is basically a database, what you'd be doing is is you never delete the file, you update parts of it. Yeah. So you yeah. sequester yes, a chunk of the file thinking. and the update, yeah. Yeah, then and that gets you into memory management issues and, and allocations and regions and stuff like that, but that's where you wind it. You know, that, that's, that. How about this, Ro? Suppose what I did was when you press the update cache button, I extract all of the personal information, as Bob calls it, which I think is accurate. Uh, pull it into memory and write it to a J file. That uh, was a three bang colon one, I think. And then I download the um, new cache and I clobber the old one. And then I write that personal information into the new cache, cache <laughs> database. Then, then most of the time you have one file and it's only if it happens during that transition that you'd have two files. That's probably right, right about where you want to be, I think. Okay. And and then after you'd finished that write process, you would you would erase that that file again so it's not there. You're back to the database. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So Bob, I have taken up more time with this than I intended <laughs> to and we're probably towards the end. What else we we can defer anything else on this to the next to the next meeting? What else would you like to cover? And I apologize for leaving you so little time. Go ahead. Uh, actually, I I I think the time spent on this is much in advance of anything. The only thing I was going to talk about is whether we wanted to approach how we were going to look at templates for pages. If we're going to guide people to make a certain type of a page, but I don't think that's key right now. I think this is much more important. Um, one question I've got is that NUMB button. What does that do? The numb. Oh, I uh, I sent you a note on that, and I, I guess I probably wasn't as clear about it as I should have been. Uh, if you haven't played with it, you should. Um, we talked about whether uh, the white stripe versus the gray stripe, whether the white stripe should be separate, should act differently. So I talk about coarse grain navigation versus fine grain navigation. Yep. If you turn num on, it's all, well, it's not working now. That's interesting. Well, when I first sent it to you, apparently okay. I broke something. Uh, it turns off the white stripe. 
Oh, okay. So all navigation becomes coarse grain navigation. I'll fix that in the next version I send you. But you had you had mentioned that particularly when you're down at the bottom, yeah, um, and you want to get to something on the top, it's very easy, as I just did, yeah. to, to clobber it as you go, know. and that's yeah. absolutely well, true, and that's that's typical of of uh, hierarchical menu style interfaces. Would it make um, sense to change the label from num to course? Oh, this was just for Bob. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and this is often the case that went right by me. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like an experiment. I, yeah. The bigger your screen, and I have the impression from other things you've said that you have a fairly large screen. I'm just operating on a laptop. The bigger your screen, the more coarse grain navigation feels okay, I think, because you're not magnifying. I bet you that's yeah, true. Yeah, I, it's good seeing you. I will see you again. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. <laughs> oh, no, none is working. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, no, that's right. It's just not supposed to do anything. Yeah. So you get your course grain navigation. And then when you're numb, yeah. when numb is on, nothing happens. But if you turn numb off, it yeah. starts selecting again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so experiment with that, see how you feel. But again, I think your screen is probably big enough that coarse grain navigation is fine for you. Yeah, I'm on a 24 inch screen and I think that would make a big difference for sure. I should there get on go. my laptop right. and try it or or my, oh, we haven't tried it on iPads and stuff. I'm not sure, I'm not sure how you know how to approach that. But anyway, yeah, I can do it on my laptop too. Yeah, give it a shot and see whether you still feel yeah. that you only need coarse grain navigation. Yeah, no, I will. 